playing some more of that hybrid consume. I start off by eating his uh, Impair Brigade. I know Impair Brigade, uh, Impair Brigade is going to get up into like the the tens of strength. You know, like uh, it's going to hit at least ten strength. It's probably going to hit up to something like fifteen, eighteen strength, especially early on. Especially early on in the round. Uh, so I want to get rid of it earlier. Uh, I want to get rid of it early. Uh, an alternate option would be the. Uh, I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head, but the guy that will do two damage to the enemy every time a, sp uh, a enemy spy appears. That's also a really good target, but yeah, it you know it's whatever. I go for a pretty high tempo play. I set the pace of this match. I'm saying my I'm going to beat you with tempo. I'm going to make sure you have to make less good options just so you can stay uh, stay with me. And because this guy is a good player. He realizes this and he goes for a high tempo play. I really like this. A lot of people would go for like a low tempo play. Like they'd set up like another Impera Brigade or something. But they'd be totally wrong. This guy knows. He knows. He goes for Calvate. He pulls out uh, uh, Rain Fan. And then he pulls out this card which sets up. It, it both sets up a combo for earlier. Uh, for the next few turns. Also it keeps some, his strength close to mine. It's very like... It's obvious that this guy is worthy of this the uh, the stuff he's got here. Ranger and like this like top one thousand or top five hundred, whatever it is, border. Which is weird that I was kinda going up against people like I I went up against a bunch of people that had the uh, these green tags and special borders on my way up to uh while I was climbing the ranked ladder, which is so weird because it was at the relatively low part of the ladder. <laughs> I was like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> And they were all playing weird decks too, like Calvate. Uh, one was playing some kind of Skellige. It was weird. I don't know. So I'm just setting up my my engine, my consume engine. I'm gonna kill this. I'm gonna eat the spy so that if he does play like an Imperial Brigade or something, he's not gonna get much value off of it. And in general, I'm in a really good spot here. I'm in complete control of this match. Uh, there's not really a whole much to it. Uh, the point of this video, it is. There's the, sorry, excuse me. There's the Imperial Brigade. So it came in at a six instead of an eight because eight, that's by. Uh, like I was saying, uh, the point of this video is going to be at the very end. <laughs> for for some reason, as usual. Uh, and this is really good by him. He set up his, this is such a weird, like, is this a tech specifically for, actually, no, it's not a tech. Actually, it's spying. Why did, why didn't I ever play this in my spying deck? This is so good. It's so crazy good, this deck. Uh, so he, even if it wasn't, it's not necessarily tech against consume monsters or whatever, uh, but he notices that my turn timer is at one and I have no way to stop this because it starts at the start of my turn. So what he's going to do is that he places it right in front of my Vran Warrior so he gets eaten immediately and he gives himself all these points. It's like, what, uh, 25, 25 points? Uh, minus three. 22 so it was a 22 point swing really good really 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 good and i noticed something big right here right uh so i'm kind of itching to play my spy in general uh because playing your spy in round one is really good because you set up uh if you're in a power position because you can set up yourself to uh whiten the gap of card advantage so i i see this i see 10 strength 10 strength 12 strength oh but i have fog so if i play this frightener here next turn and pull this here Next turn, this is going to go down to 10 strength. So it's going to be 10 strength, 10 strength, 10 strength. So it's going to be 30 point Igni, which I have in my hand. Also, if I had like a Blizzard or a Merigor Tailstorm, I mean, that also would have been pretty good. So this is incredible right here. This is as if this uh, the spy costs nothing. He plays his own spy because he realizes that he's in a bit of trouble here. And he needs to try and wind the gap a little bit. And maybe try and force me to pass or something like that. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go for this casual... 35 point gold <laughs> oh man Igni is not always insane but when it is it's just ridiculous good stuff 36 to 60 I'm pretty sure he passes by this point and it was really good that he played that spy there when he did oh he doesn't pass oh he's gonna keep going oh yeah that's right, that's right. Uh, this is actually the point of this video is a two parter of the same uh, of the same um, subject matter. So he pulls out this guy and he puts this as spying, right? Interesting, right? 
why would you make this spying? Now you have to think, uh, because I've already played this deck a considerable amount, I basically know what he's already going to do. Uh, if you don't know, this is Spying Calvate. Uh, it relies on a very standard uh, spying package. Um, th this this four strength guy right here that does two damage, that's a little bit t a touch unusual, but I definitely welcome its appearance in the deck, and I'll probably change my deck to include this as well. He also included a mage, which is probably two counter uh, gold weathers, which I probably would tech in myself as well. But also, he has these guys, right? This is the new card that came with the new patch. This is the guy that will toggle the spying. And also, keep in mind, this John Calvate spying deck has Menno. Menno is a gold card that will destroy any spying unit. Now, watch as my friend warrior eats this, right? He's going to eat it. Now, this has become a 22 strength spying unit. If he plays Menno, Menno will be a 30 strength gold unit. Because it'll, he'll play it, it'll be 8 strength, and he'll kill this, and it'll be 22 strength. And then it'll be gone. It'd be almost as good as my Igni, which took a little bit more trouble to set up. Uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to get rid of the spying tag. How am I going to get rid of the spying tag? I'm going to use my Akimara to get rid of it. Now he has no way to menow it unless he toggles a spying on this too. In which case, if he did do that, I would just pass. And it's just going to pass now. And I have a little bit of carryover, which is nice. Because he has a little bit more to uh, jump over. So that's uh, part one of the same subject matter, being able to predict... Things like Menno. Uh, I'm, if he's setting up the spying tag on one of my units, I'm pretty sure he's either A, going to Nausicaa Brigade it, which if it's within 7 strength, then you want to try and buff it out of that range. Uh, using a, a spying toggle on something like a, a Kedwini Seat Support is pretty common. And then they would Nausicaa Brigade it next turn to just annihilate it since it only has 6 strength, 6 base strength. Uh, option 2 is to... Menno it, and Menno it would completely destroy it. And you want to avoid having your your unit uh, as spying because you don't want you obviously don't want to uh, you don't want it to get Menno'd. It's a very powerful combo that I actually really really enjoyed when I was playing uh, my time with John Calvite at the beginning of this patch. So I play my Rock Golem, get a little get just a little bit of uh, of tempo out, force him to play a card, force him to play another card. Uh, granted, if he had played some play that allowed him to have twelve. In uh, in a single card, that would have been kind of bad, but I don't particularly have to worry about that. It's not really common for John Covey to do 12 in a single turn with nothing on the board. And then he uses Assassinate, which is really nice. Uh, he does get rid of my carryover, but at the same time, I get a pretty high value card out of him. That's something like a 16 value card that basically gave him nothing. It just allowed him to win the round. It was basically, it was effectively uh, to... I was basically effectively an 8 strength card, which is fine by me. It was half as effective as it could have been. I probably should have kept one of those Neckers, because if he peters it, then it, it annihilates that combo. But it's not that big a deal. Considering what I'm going to end up doing. So I'm not playing the Necker yet, because I'm still kind of... Oh, I do play the Necker. Even though I was afraid of Peter, maybe it's because I don't. I, I guess I was thinking he doesn't run Peter since he was running uh, the mage. Still though, I don't really like that. Uh, I should have played the the harpies first. I think what I was thinking is that I was gonna play the necker and then I was gonna caretaker a like a spy or something to try and I don't know. It was, it was kind of a mistake there. And what he should have done. He should, uh, once he sees the Necker, he should have placed the Spies on the right side of the Necker, so that whenever it does get eaten, the, the next Necker will go behind the Spy. But if a uh, placement mistake by him. Although, generally speaking, it may not matter. So there it goes again, right? He still has Menno in his hand, I'm guessing, and he uses his Spy to toggle this once again. Now, I don't want to lose this, because if I lose this, I may actually just lose the game. Because that will be a 16 strength swing. So what I do is I use my caretaker. I know he has one of these in his graveyard because he used one last turn, uh, last round. So I'm going to pull it out immediately and use it on my guy to untoggle that spying unit so he can't meno it. And he gives up. <laughs> That's so, like, whatever people, like, this has happened twice in a row now, uh, both of these videos. I counter their win condition and then they forfeit immediately. <laughs> it's so great. So yeah, so you, utilizing knowledge of the game of the past rounds to be able to counter your opponent's win condition that you know that they're going for. Good stuff. And that's, again, that's why I like Dagon Consume. Like, you can't really 
counter like that kind of strategy in like most other decks. But in Dagon Consume, you absolutely can because you have Caretaker and because you have uh, uh, like Ekimaru's and things like that. That's why I really enjoy Dagon because he's so flexible in that way. So it's, it's it's fun. It's all good stuff. This is definitely a really good deck. I really enjoy it. It's probably my favorite deck in probably my favorite deck in a while besides barring uh John Calvate. Yeah, like 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 months worth of time is probably my favorite deck besides John Covet. It's pretty surprising because I never was really much of a monster player like uh, leading up to open beta. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.